Hello guys, my name is Agent M and welcome to the first episode, or you know, episode 1 of Minecraft Education Edition. Today I'm gonna teach the teachers how to set up a world or how to set up a classroom in game the best way. So I'm actually a student so it's it's gonna be a little bit different from what I do but it will be very familiar. So this is the title screen and as you can see we have this icon here which allows you to change the language to the language that you and your students speak. So um, these are the languages that are currently supported but I guess uh, in the near future, future there will be more languages and there will be enough languages to choose from so every language will probably current, uh, like at some point be supported but for now I'm just gonna use English US um, click here for more support um, if you don't understand something you will be redirected to the support page and it will open into another browser so here you can see your character so if you're a teacher you, your, your name will come up here and your skin below if you're a student same thing will happen um, I don't know if there's any differences because I only have access to the student version but it should be about the same I guess so you will want to hit play at some point but I'm just gonna go through the options really quickly because there are a few things that uh, you might want to note is difficulty so if you put this all the way back it's on peaceful mode this means there won't be any mobs spawning and it, this also means that students won't be distracted by zombies and skeletons and other monsters that might uh, keep them from work so you put it down and there won't be any distractions if you want to teach them in a more hostile environment you can put it on easy normal or even hard then there are a few other settings um, you want to uh, look at these things uh, multiplayer game and broadcast to LAN you want to probably keep these on because if you don't keep them on um, your students won't be able to join alright so yeah here are some controls you can just mess around with them um, mess around with them until you like um, what you got and yeah and we have graphics I have my random distance put all the way up um, but depending on your computer how good it is maybe you are on a school computer that's not really good you put it all the way down you only have a few blocks that you can see forward but at least the game won't run terrible so I'm just gonna put it at the max because I can um, we also have particle render distance and this also this is not really too important it's more for um, particles so yeah you can put it anywhere you want where you want to like where you, where you like it you put it down here um, not too many particles were rendered on screen so that's also for computers that aren't too great I guess so yeah those are some things you want to keep mind keep keep in mind also we have this experimental height GUI you probably want to keep that off so if your GUI for some reason is gone check this option right um, as well as a few other options right here that you might want to turn off like fancy graphics and depending on your computer all right that's the options uh, I think you're <laughs> totally done with the options all right so let's just get into it so I already have two worlds so you can see the average size of a world that's newly generated <laughs> we are going to make a new world though um, and I'll show you what you can do in that new world so first you want to click new world and you want to create a new world all right if you already have a world you can import it by clicking here and you know browse through your settings and or browse through your files and import a level this is uh, useful for if you make a world with um, certain exercises that the students have to make you can export a world which I'll show you later and you can import them 
or your students can import them by using this mechanic and they can go into the world do whatever they have to do make a portfolio and send it up to you send it to you and yeah basically that's how imports work but we're gonna make a new world and we're gonna call it my classroom because we're gonna make a simple classroom in this video um, showing the, you the basics on how to manage one and keeping your students at work not distracted fighting zombies so your first classroom you probably want to start on flat because these settings they generate all kinds of terrain and all this terrain might be distracting or it's not really useful for building like large structures or things like that so um, you want to go to flat um, if in for some reason in some newer updates um, this changes um, I'm in the early access right now um, don't you worry there will probably be still some flat options somewhere you just have to look for it but that's the general idea you want to make a world um, just give it a name put it on flat and just hit create world so depending on how fast your computer is this might take uh, a bit and might lag but once the world is loaded you are now in the game and I am not like a full admin I can't edit everything so the things I can do as a student um, is actually all these commands right here I can actually give myself abilities which normally students won't be able to do so let's let's talk about that the differences between the setup I'm using as a student right now and the setup that normal students will have is you are currently in uh, or I should say I am currently in my own world so whatever I do I, ca I can do that because it's my own world but if you are a teacher as, you, as I said before in the options we have this open to LAN where was it here this multiplayer game broadcast to LAN and so people can join you over the network so I'll show you real quick how that is done you go here to play and probably to friends and you'll have to either have a LAN network already show up here or you have to say add, add a server and then you'll have to put in the IP address of the server which is probably just the local address um, that might be a little bit difficult or actually this is never mind this is external servers all right so LAN network worlds will probably show up here if everybody's connected to the same Wi-Fi network and they can join your world the difference between that and their own world is that they won't have all these abilities that I showed you before all these commands that showed up in chat and they will not be able to alter the world too much uh, you can completely control that so let's get into my classroom and just show you what I mean with that so first off if you're a, a teacher you wanna look at a few commands that are gonna be important to you so one of the commands that's gonna be important to you is the ability command it's all all the way on the top there so you're gonna write ability then you hit space and then you want to choose a player as you can see here are all the available options so you can use add and then select one of these or you just type in a name so I'm just gonna hit tab there and it will auto complete and put my name there alright then we have two options here world builder or may fly world builder will actually allow your students to build specific things in the world um, such as boards or um, borders I'll, I'll show you right now actually so there are these blocks these are special blocks as well as the as these let me just put them in my inventory these are special blocks that I can't use as a student at the moment I don't know if, if a teacher can immediately use them but if you can't 
the way you want to do uh, do something about that is ability, your name, world builder, true. All right, so ability has been updated, so I can now build in the world, and with that they mean like special blocks like these. And I'll get into what they are in next episode probably, because this episode is getting a little bit long, a little bit longer than I expected, but normally these blocks you can't place if you're a student, only with the this command set. If you put it to false, I cannot break or place these blocks anymore. So yeah, that's what this ability does. The next ability is may fly. If you give this to a player, then when they're in creative mode, or probably any game mode, I don't know, but they can fly around and edit their builds by, you know, flying up. If you put this to false, um, you can't, I'm, I'm hitting space right now, I can't fly and modify my building by flying, I'll have to build, oh, I'll have to build up and edit it normally. Also, a side effect from the world, um, world, what was it called again? World Builder um, ability is that you cannot pass these uh, borders anymore. If you are in world, bil world Builder, wow, World Builder, if you have World Builder ability, you will be able to pass these borders. You can pass over them, you can pass under them, but you can't pass through them without breaking it. So those are the two abilities that I want to show you this episode. Next episode I will um, have a classroom for your build to show you how that all works. So I hope you're still following me now and I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I taught you something um, about you know some certain blocks that you can't break with certain abilities and to give students certain abilities um, and how it all works so you know with LAN that works so that students that join over the LAN network actually start with the, it the opt so like this command and then a player name will make this player be able to use commands like these um, like ability the op and all those commands if you're not an op all these commands won't be there so your students won't be able to secretly give themselves abilities all right um, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you understood all the things I told you um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time and I will build a classroom in between those two episodes this one and that one and I'll show you what these blocks all do.